brothers and sisters in Christ. Hope everybody's well. Um, I wanted to get on here. I have a message from our Lord Jesus Christ, and it's for his glory alone, not mine. Definitely don't want any glory. My last video jammed some gears, and I knew that's what was going to happen because the Lord warned me. Um, he needs me to tell everybody that there's no time for hate, especially on my channel, because I'm not a, I'm not your typical YouTuber. I don't care about subscribers because I know that the Lord God will get this message to who he wants it to get to. So when you're leaving hateful comments, you know, uh, like, uh, you're a false prophet and, you know, there, there's just straight up hate coming and I don't have time for it. The Lord doesn't have time for it. So choose your words wisely. If you put hate on the channel, then I'm just going to block you because I don't have time for that. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the, uh, um, you know, all that, but I just have to tell you guys that the Lord is going to have me start blocking people. So, um, it, it's one thing if you say, Hey brother, like I'm, I'm concerned about you and like this specifically, what did you mean? You know, or something like that. Like if you're actually searching for the truth, but if it's straight up hate by saying, you know, uh, you're deceived and you're going to hell or something. I'm just going to delete it and I'm going to delete you and you're not going to have access to this channel anymore. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now that we got that established yesterday was, uh, last night, the, um, theme of it all was a call to repentance. Let's just be real. This is the end of the world. We are the last generation, the most blessed generation in all of history to see what we're seeing. We're witnessing Bible prophecy come to pass all over the world. And uh, it's about to happen. So let me just show you what the Lord shared with me last night. Um, hang on one second. Let me pause this. Okay, guys, so this is what the Lord was showing me. I don't know why it won't focus. Wow. There we go. Okay, so this is the Lord saying to wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. This is in Isaiah 1 and 2, what we're going to be going over. And I just want to show you some scriptures. It's basically going to be only scriptures in this. We have to cease to do evil, guys. You know, we're the body of Christ. We need to start acting like it. So I hate to say, but um, all of the people that are teaching once saved, always saved, um, you know, you, you say a prayer and you get saved and then you could just keep on sinning because we're saved through grace. No, it says, if you love me, you would keep my commandments. And so if, if you're not keeping the commandments, the love of the father isn't in you. If you're not feeling bad when you're sinning, then you don't have the Holy Spirit because you'd be putting Jesus back on the cross every time. So if you don't feel the conviction from lying or cheating or stealing or watching porn or, or looking at women all the time, you know, people, we need to, brothers and sisters, we need to say this. And if, if you agree with this, just say to yourself, amen. But if you really agree with it, I would suggest to say it out loud later. 
I denounce this world and the things of it. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the heart, and the pride of life. That's what's caused this world all the problems, is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the heart, and the pride of life. So this is the Lord saying, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. He wants to reason with you guys. He's having mercy on waiting longer because he doesn't want anybody to perish. He says, come on, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be, they shall be white as snow. He will wipe your sins from you if you just humble yourself and say, I'm sorry, God. I am so sorry for the things that I've been doing and I want to change and I can't do it on my own. I tried. So though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And that goes with Psalm 51.7. Let me just hop there real fast. I have all kinds of marks in my Bible, so please forgive those. Um, but this is one of my favorite verses. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Purge me. You know, we need to purge ourselves of the sins that we're committing. Purge yourself of any unclean thing. Stop watching violence, sex, drugs, you know, um, murdering on TV. We need to stop and clear our minds of this world and let go of this world. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, you need to let go of everything of this world and focus on one thing, the Lord Jesus Christ. Purge me, all right? Purge yourselves. Okay, now back to this. So, where are we at? He's saying that he will wash your sins if you just confess them and fess up. If you be willing and obedient, guys, you will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. If you refuse and rebel, if you refuse not to bow the knee now, you're going to do it later. I can't, I can't stress that enough that regardless if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ or not, you will bow to him and Satan will bow to him. How has this faith, faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it. But now murderers. You guys know what they're doing with the laws that they passed with the abortion bill? That you can kill a baby? That's infanticide. That you could kill him at nine months, right up to the date. These politicians are not going to get away with it. And uh, that's what's going to be coming in the uh, in, later on in this video. Well, and in the next video, because I'm already at nine minutes. But I'm not going to rush. I've rushed on the last ones, and I'm not going to do it. So, because I don't get it all in. How is the faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it but now murders. He's talking about America, guys. That's what he was saying to me through this. Thy silver is become dross, thy wine mixed with water. All right, hang on a second. So just so you guys can see what dross means, it said, thy silver is become dross, thy wine mixed with water. The silver is going to be worthless. Your guys' silver and gold that you're storing up 
not your guys's, I don't mean you guys, but I'm saying people's gold and silver that they're storing up is going to be waste or scum. They're going to be throwing it to the streets because it's not going to save them. Water and food in the tribulation will be uh, worth money. But other than that, the silver and gold is going to be like nothing. And we'll get into that. I don't know how many videos I'm going to have to do, how many parts, but I'll do as many as it takes. Okay, so again, guys, this is Isaiah 1 and 2. So Isaiah 2, and, and I'd suggest you guys uh, read both chapters because uh, this is what the Lord was showing me. But I just want to say that I believe this is the thousand-year reign. Um. This is at the end of the tribulation. That's that's where we're having problems, guys. All right, let's just... That's why, where we're having problems is with, you know, post-trib, uh, mid-trib. Okay, so... I think the confusion is that the Lord doesn't return all the way. His feet don't touch the ground. When the harpazo occurs, when the rapture occurs, his feet don't touch the ground. We are called up to him. So the day of the Lord is when Jesus comes back to the earth and takes the kingdoms of this world. He's not going to ask nicely, hey, um, you know, no, he's going to return with ten thousands of his saints. Satan's time is up. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Um, the day of the Lord. I'm going to read this and then I'm going to start a new video. Uh, I believe this is the thousand year reign. I was honestly about to look it up on the internet to make sure like I, I'm correct, but the Lord said just put it out. So I believe this is, this is what he's shown me, I think. No, I have 100% faith that this is when the Lord returns for his thousand year reign. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, uh, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and he uh, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. No more war. Peace for a thousand years. Real peace while Satan is bound and put in the pit for a thousand years, and then he's loosed for a season, it says. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Okay, guys, I'm going to do a part two to this because I'm already at 14 minutes, and uh, yeah, I'll be back. Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus Christ is returning. Love you, brothers and sisters.